everybody, welcome back to the Stuff of Legend. My name is D'Lo, I've got another video for you guys today. We are going to be fan casting a very, very mighty, powerful, epic character known as Galactus, Devourer of Worlds. He's got a lot of nicknames actually, so I think like the Lifebringer, the Cedar of Worlds. Anyway, there's a lot of, a lot of names out there, but we are going to go ahead and jump right in. I am going to be selecting actors that I think could not only uh, voice this role, but some I think could portray this role. So similar to how Josh Brolin played Thanos, I think some of the actors on my list have the ability to look like Galactus from the comics, from the books, from um, what we know him to look like. And some of them I think would have a voice that would lend itself really nicely to him playing him on the big screen. Um, more so than like CGI motion capture. So for some of these guys, I think you might need to get like a, uh, a double to do the CGI or motion capture, kind of like how they did Thanos. But um, this is a very difficult character to, to do. And so I think uh, if you're going to do it right, you just got to get someone with a voice first. And then you could look at, okay, can this person also play him in a motion capture setting? Maybe, maybe not. Let's get him a body double. So it's not super important. So I won't really be pointing out the height of any of these guys so much as I'm just going to play for you guys some audio through the speaker. So make sure your volume's up. Um, not crazy loud, but just loud enough that you can hear my, my speaking voice should be fairly comparable. Um, so I'll play some audio clips for you. So let's go ahead and get into this. So first up, Galactus. Uh, of course, is um, very a very important character in Marvel Cosmic. Um, he's also a character that is heavily tied in with the Silver Surfer. And Silver Surfer's entire story and origin is wrapped up in who Galactus is. And uh, if you're going to do Silver Surfer, you have to do Galactus at some point or, in, or initially. It's very important. So um, let's just go ahead and jump right in. So the first uh, person I would like to present to you is my number one. Um, I'm going to show you Ian McDermott. Now, Ian McDermott is um, 74 years old. But again, if you're going to pick someone for Galactus, age doesn't really matter. Uh, as long as you can expect you know, that they're in a healthy state and they'll be around for probably about, I would say, 5, 10 years. Um, they can continue to voice um, Galactus for uh, probably a few, a few movies at least. Um, he's not someone that's going to go away. He's not someone that's going to be killed. Um, he's someone that's going to stick around for a while. So, uh, you guys know Ian McDermott. He is Emperor Palpatine in uh, Star Wars. And so, if you guys haven't seen him there, he was in a, a couple other things. I think Dirty Rotten Scoundrels and there's a few other um, uh, like films and TV shows that he has been on. But most notably is Star Wars. And so I'm going to go ahead and play for you guys a little bit of audio of the voice of Ian McDermott. Let's take a listen to him reading Shakespeare, uh, a Shakespeare version of Star Wars. So let's let's go ahead and have a listen. Luke falls, Darth Vader rises. Rise. And Luke says, oh, agony, as well he might. Mark should be here to do that. Yeah. Mark. But, you know, he's in the building somewhere. Okay, here, here we go. <laughs> Young fool, tis only now in this thy final living moment thou dost comprehend thy folly and my might. Thy feeble skills are nothing when compared to all. Thou dost pay the rightful price for thy severe and utter lack of vision. I, thy debt is due, and I am both thy creditor and thy collector too. What thou? You guys catch that? <laughs> He's got one of the craziest, um, ins insanely deep, but also just like sinister like ill news as ill guest like very like weird like uh deep raspy but also just like like chilling he's got this this insane voice this his voice is such a gift and uh this guy uh he's everybody's favorite voice in star wars and 
oh my gosh, he would be so good as Galactus. The way that that hall that he was speaking in, it resonates. Um, I think that that was really, really nice because it helps to give you an idea of what Galactus could sound like speaking so thunderously into um, space. And I know all you science nerds are going to be like, sound can't travel in space. I hear you. But that's probably not where they're going to go with Galactus. Um, for him, it's probably going to be thunderous and booming and stuff. And forget reality. We're in. We're talking about comic books here. So um, I think that would be really cool to have that thundering just blast of a voice, even though it's calm and it's in control. And uh, I'll play you a few more seconds of this. That's awesome. And he's talking in a way that isn't really about the Silver Surfer. It's not about Marvel at all. It's about it's a Star Wars novel that's written in a Shakespearean format. But it's really, really um, – uh, what's the word? It resembles kind of the pattern that you would, you would hear um, Galactus speaking to Silver Surfer in. If you guys are aware and you heard that, um, that – or if you ever watched the old TV show – uh, in the 90s, I believe it was, of The Silver Surfer on Fox. Man, that was such a good show. And uh, it was an animated TV series. But this is so reminiscent of how Galactus speaks to um, The Silver Surfer. Just like long and drawn out, in control, chilling, um, just powerful. And this is totally it. So in my opinion, um, I think that Ian McDermott is the guy that you want to play um, Galactus. So again, here he is, uh, mild mannered, and here he is as the Dark Lord of the Sith. Um, and so this is his prominent role. He's been in like one or two other things, um, but this is—he's the guy. He is Lord Sidious, and so this is this is who you would want sitting on that galactic throne. <laughs> so cool. I didn't know that I was going to do that. That's awesome. All right. So next up on my list, um, we have. Uh, Kevin Michael Richardson. So Kevin Michael Richardson is 54 years old, and he's uh, on the Cleveland show. He's in the Batman, the animated uh, – not not the Batman, the animated series as a title, but just an animated series that is called The Batman from 2004 to 2008. And then also American Dad, Transformers Prime, Lilo and Stitch. I'm going to play for you some of his audio as well. Generosity is not just a giving away of valuables. There's also a generosity of spirit between friends. So that was him as Plato from the Adventures from the Book of Virtues. So a generosity of spirit between friends. Now we have Peruvian marching powder. Principal Lewis from American Dad. Run on the Andes, North Slope. I'd say it's about 80% baby laxative. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so then uh, the next one here, he was two roles. He was Tyro and the Lion Turtle from Avatar The Last Airbender. Plan is to survive, wait out this war. Hope that one day some of us can get back home and forget this ever happened. The true mind can weather all the lies and illusions. This one is the one that makes me think of him as Galactus specifically. So I'm going to go back um, right here to uh, the lion turtle voice from Avatar. Listen to how ridiculously deep this is and how this could translate really nicely to Galactus. The true mind. This voice right here is, again, him, but Batman, the brave and the bold, he's playing Black Manta. Worry not. Soon we will correct the gross injustice that has denied you the throne. Then here we have him in Batman, brave and the bold as Starro, the conqueror. I have roamed the cosmos, conquering and devouring all who crossed my path. Those few who resisted my will 
eventually succumb. So that's basically all I'm going to play for you guys. We don't need too much more than that, but that was him as Star of the Conqueror. Again, another uh, space um, intergalactic-oriented creature uh, for DC Comics. But it would be really nice to see him play the Devourer of wor Worlds for Marvel. Um, that would be really great. So he's got a really powerful voice. Um, I'm going to leave that there. Again, um, I have uh, Ian McDermott and Kevin Michael Richardson as my number one and number two. So next up on the list... We have my my second favorite person for this role is Jeremy Irons. So Jeremy Irons, as you guys know, um, was recently in uh, Batman vs Superman and Justice League as Alfred. So in those uh, films, he was playing Alfred Pennyworth, the butler to Batman. But he's seventy years old. You guys probably know him most from The Lion King. That is his most prominent role. He's been in a couple of other things as a vocal role, vocal artist, and a lot of other things as an actor, on-screen actor, live action. And so I'm going to go ahead and play for you guys a clip of him in his most famous role, Scar from The Lion King. So let's just go ahead and have a listen. Life's not fair, is it? You see, I, well, I shall never be king. See the light of another day, <laughs> and you. Didn't your mother ever tell you not to play with your food? What do you want? I'm here to announce that King Mufasa's on his way, so you better have a good excuse for missing the ceremony this morning. No. That higher voice is not him. That's Zazu. Zazu, you made me lose my lunch. Ha! You'll lose more than that when the king gets through with you. He's as mad as a hippo with a hernia. Ooh, mm. I quiver with fear. Now, Scar, don't look at me that way. Hello! So that's super awesome. So he, him as Scar is one of the most iconic voices in all of Disney. Other than obviously Mickey Mouse, Goofy, there's a handful of the like, you know, the other characters that started it all. But as far as you know, some of the standalone films, I would say Jeremy Irons is probably the number one guy that owns one of the most iconic voices in animated history. Scar from The Lion King. And uh, I think he would do really well. I think his voice is perfect. It's, it's deep. It's rich. It's sinister. And I think that for him, uh, Gala he would add that edge to Galactus that would make him um, be able to play kind of that neutral evil that isn't seeking like ill intent on anybody, but he also does not have any concern whatsoever for the life on any of the planets he needs to consume. And I think that that would just give him that kind of coldness um, that I think very few people would be able to bring other than I would say Jeremy Irons. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that one there. So Jeremy Irons um, is my next uh, best pick. He's, I think, my number two favorite pick on this list. So I'm going to leave that there. Let me know what you guys think down below. So next up on my list, we have Liam Neeson. And this one is a really fun choice. Um, Liam Neeson has been doing a lot more of uh, vocal acting recently. Um, his, some of his live action stuff from Nonstop, Schindler's List, The Commuter, Taken, Cold Pursuit. He did a lot more recently in animated. So as you guys know, he was Qui-Gon Jinn in uh, The Phantom Menace, but also in The Clone Wars, he voiced uh, Qui-Gon Jinn. Then he did uh, Family Guy, playing himself. He was in The Simpsons as Father Sean. Um, then uh, he's been in a lot of these other other movies and uh, TV shows that I'm not quite so familiar with, except for, say, like the Lego movie, where he plays Bad Cop, Good Cop, and Paw Cop, um, all three. He plays Aslan in all of the Chronicles of Narnia. Um, he also plays uh, the character he played in Batman Begins, Ra's al Ghul. Um, he voiced him in the video game for Batman Begins. Um, and then the Huntsman, Winter's War, he was the narrator. So he's done a lot in the realm of vocal acting. Uh, not as much as a lot of the other guys on my list. But I'm going to go ahead and just play for you guys a clip that kind of explains what I'm talking about. So to give context, Liam Neeson was on, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was Jimmy Kimmel, and uh, he was on his show, and one of the, uh, the crowd members came out and was like, oh my gosh, Liam Neeson, you know, could you do me a favor? I'm a huge fan. And he's like, well, sure, what do, what do you need? And then he's like, oh, um, could you intimidate me or could you threaten me? 
and he and he was you know it's obviously for a show because he's on Kimmel's show he's got to do something fun um totally staged but nevertheless it's still really cool Liam Neeson obliges and decides to threaten this show host and they play this creepy music in the background they put a spotlight on him so I'm going to play for you this monologue that he does for this guy but pay attention to his voice and the style that he's uh kind of speaking in right here it's from kind of reminiscent of how he was in Taken so let's go ahead and have a listen Before this night's over, I will kill you. But before I kill you, I will make you suffer pain so unimaginable, you will wiggle and beg and pray for the gift of death. Eventually, I will give you that gift. But when you <laughs> wake up in hell, you won't find peace. You know why, Matthew? Because I'll be there waiting for you again. Matthew. And then he, and then the crowd cheers and they have fun with it. But dang, his voice is also prime. Uh, I would say it's a lot more along the lines of um, uh, Jeremy Irons. In, not as close, but very, very sinister, very close, very deep, and just, just an intimidating voice for sure. And so I think that he would also be a really good choice to, to voice Galactus. Um, I'm not sure if you would want him to keep his accent or if you would want him to get like a speech coach and, um, and you know, have it become something else. Maybe, I don't know, uh, could be American, could be British. You could let him keep it. I don't really care. But nevertheless, if you wanted it to feel a little bit like Liam Neeson, you could alter it somehow and give it uh, its own personality. But the depth and just the sound of his voice is just so strong. And I think that that's something that would be really cool to have for Galactus. So that's pretty much what I had to say about that. So let me let me know if that what that audio clip was enough to convince you guys for Liam Neeson if you think he'd be a good choice or if not, if you think that he's not a great choice, let me know down below and let me know why. So anyway, next up on the list, we have Corey Burton. So Corey Burton is 63 years old and um, he was also in Star Wars The Clone Wars. He was also in Return to Neverland, Atlantis, The Lost Empire, um, Jake and the Neverland Pirates, uh, Treasure Planet, and a billion, billion other things. Corey Burton, he's got credits for like, I think it was uh, 578 different roles in 218 different titles, being TV shows or movies. This guy is a voice acting legend. He was in Batman, The Brave and the Bold, and he voices like, what is it, 4, 8, 12, uh, 13 characters. Um, Star Wars, the Clone Wars. Just look at this roster, please. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. Uh, that would be 23. So he was in 20, 23 different roles in Star Wars, the Clone Wars in 2008. That's insane. This guy is a powerhouse. He can do a lot of different things. Transformers animated, Wolverine and the X-Men. Um, just, just the list goes on and on and on. And on 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 and this guy is just the this guy's amazing. I don't. There's very few things that this guy can't do. So that being said, let me just go back to the screen so it's not so confusing. I'm gonna go ahead and play for you guys the next clip of Corey Burton doing a bunch of different voices you probably do recognize. So let me just uh, play a little bit of this. <laughs> oh, so right now, just a so, quick header. Um, he's also one of the guys that did the voices. Um, for the rides at Disneyland, like, like, please keep your hands and feet inside the vehicle at all times, you know, like that kind of thing. So let's check it out. <laughs> we'll start with, of course, he is the voice of the parking lot tram. Wait. Ladies and gentlemen, please keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside while the tram is moving. Oh, yes, well, the very first voice I did for Disney was the voice of Hans Connery, who was out of town at the time. And That's amazing. Doris Butler was working on a slide film for Disney. And uh, Doris said, you know, I know this kid. Uh, he does Both of these voices, the high voice, the low voice, the, uh, the tram voice, all those voices, this is just him. Pretty good Hans impression. Uh, he called me and said, you want an audition for this? Okay. And that ended up being my first uh, professional um, in DuckTales. Continue the exercise and tell yourself she's just a figment of the imagination. 
<laughs> These are simply my emergency earthquake supplies. So that's him doing accents with other voices. And these are the kind of things that everybody should have in their homes in case there's a real earthquake. You are a worthless... This is him in Aladdin. He's the guy that's kind of persecuting Aladdin. Street rat. You were born a street rat. You'll die a street rat. And only your fleas will mourn you. Would the lady like... So then he's also some of these guys in the street that are kind of uh, trying to um, uh, talk to or impress uh, Princess Jasmine. Like a necklace, a pretty necklace for a pretty lady. And then this is him in Thundercats. I forget what the name of this guy is, but he's one of the kings of old that um, that speaks to him in in the spirit to kind of uh, guide him into his into being a king. This is the 2011 uh, Thundercats remake, which was really good. Um, but he's the voice of this elder here. Surprise, death, and reality itself are different within the book. The answers lie in the book's all-seeing record of the past. But to truly understand them. You must relive the events that led us here long ago. But the guy is just insane. And the reason why I played all those different clips what, where he's higher, lower, accent, no accent, it's, it's because this guy can literally do anything. His voice has such immense range. You could have him play Galactus like some of the earlier voices he was doing on the stage in the beginning. And then you could also have him voice like several aliens or characters in zen law this could <laughs> potentially save disney a lot of money um, but again he has a huge history working with disney this would not be a stretch and it would be really nice to bring him back and have him do some more vocal work for disney through marvel um, and i think it would fit really nicely to have him be galactus so let's just keep moving steve blum so steve blum is 58 years of age um he is uh best i would say known for his role as Zeb Aurelios, hello there, Captain Ze Zeb Aurelios, uh, Zeb Aurelios from Star Wars Rebels, and then also Wolverine from Wolverine and the X-Men, he was in Transformers Prime, The Legend of Korra, lots of lots of things, he was in Bumblebee, um, Lilo and Stitch, uh, Be uh, Cowboy Bebop, the movie, lots of things, so I'm going to go ahead and show you some of that, um, this guy is an absolute savage, so if you thought the last guy did a lot, in vocal acting, check out Steve Blum. 893 roles from three and from 399 titles. This guy is busy with vocal acting. Marvel, Disc Wars, The Avengers. He plays Wolverine a lot, so you'll see Wolverine and Transformers come up many, many, many times. Star Wars Rebels. He's got like eight characters under his belt. Um, here's him as Wolverine again in Lego Lego Marvel Superheroes. Hulk and the Agents of Smash, he played Wolverine, he played the Wrecker, he played Sauron, he played Devil Dinosaur. Then in Avengers Assemble, he plays Kang the Conqueror, Kang Head, and a biker. Legend of Korra, this one was really interesting to me. He played Baraz, Yao, Hunter 2, Red Lotus Guard 1, and one of my favorite characters, which got me hooked on the show in the first place, was Amon, um, or Noah Talk. That voice was so just, like, entrancing. And that's, that's something that I think would work really well. In, let me point out again, in Ultimate Spider-Man, he played Kazar, he played Wolverine again. I'm going to go ahead and play you some of this audio. In the Punisher video game, he plays Matt Murdock, and he also plays Bullseye. So um, I'll, I'll show you some of the dialogue. So there's Matt Murdock talking to, um, talking to Punisher at first, and then it'll cut to him as, as Bullseye, and I'll let you know when that happens. Hold it right there. Anything my client has said without his attorney present is inadmissible. Mr. Castle, don't say another word. Mr. Castle, as your attorney, I strongly... I don't need a lawyer. You're fired. Mr. <laughs> Castle, this is very ill advised Objection noted and overruled. All right, so now we're going to see the Punisher um, approaching Bullseye, and he's also voicing Bullseye. So he was, he was Matt Murdock, Daredevil, and he's also Bullseye. So check this out. <laughs> Thought you'd never get here, That's Castle. It. Looking for someone. Where's Kingpin, Bullseye? The big guy can't see you now, Castle. But I've made room for you in my schedule. Get out of the way. Or what? You'll scowl me to death? I don't miss, you know. Too bad you can't say the same. Ares in God of War. You're just a mortal. Every bit as weak as the day you begged me to save your life. 
You have no idea what a true monster is, Kratos. This is him as Wolverine um, in the Deadpool video game. <laughs> Deadpool, I know you're around here. Hey! What were you doing over there? <laughs> Just a little surprise for our player. What? Uh, whatever, we gotta move. We need everybody on this one if we're gonna stop Sinister. That means you too. Yeah, duh. It's my game. Game. This is serious. So it's a really cool thing when you hear the voice, just a clip of the voice, and you can automatically say, I know who that is. It's, uh, it's Wolverine, right? And so like we hear that voice and it's super iconic. He can create something like that for Galactus. I'm sure of it. I know he can. He's really a uh, really good vocal actor, clearly by the size of his uh, resume. <laughs> He's just insane. I'm going to go ahead and say that Steve Blum um, would be a really good choice for this. Um, and his work as Amon in The Legend of Korra was just fantastic. That That's pretty much all I had to say about him is that I think that he'll be really good for that. So uh, Clancy Brown. So Clancy Brown is 60 years old. Um, you guys know him from SpongeBob SquarePants. You guys know him from Highlander. You know him from uh, Starship Troopers. He's been in a lot of different things. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you guys a lot of the different voices that he's done. Um, he did uh, Three Below, Tales of Arcadia. He was in Troll Hunters as Gunmar, uh, which was a really cool voice. Ryder Azadi from uh, Star Wars Rebels and Proach. Um, he was also in Robot Chicken. He played Gorilla Grodd, uh, Hulk and the Agents of Smash. He plays Red Hulk, Thunderbolt Ross, Astronaut 2, Watu the Watcher, Hogan, Scroll 2, Black Bolt, Supreme Intelligence, Avengers Assemble, including Taskmaster, Legend of Korra, he was Yakone, Ultimate Spider-Man. There was a lot of uh, cool ro uh, roles he played. Phantom Rider, again, Thunderbolt Ross, Red Hulk, Taskmaster, Acolyte 2. Green Lantern, he played uh, General Zartok. Lots of really fun roles. I'm not going to go all the way down the list. But what I will do is I will play for you guys Clancy Brown, um, voice uh, some vo vocal roles that he has done. And here we go. Avatar, it is a great honor to meet you. I am Long Feng. Grand Secretariat of Ba Sing Se and head of the <laughs> Dai Li. The brittle remains of the Justice Society of America. That's him as Per Degaton from Batman the Brave and the Bold. How fitting to find you holed up in a museum with the other antiques. Pai Mei from um, Kung Fu Panda Legend of Awesomeness. So mongers, direct me to the Kung Fu master known as Shifu. He hmm. shall be my next miserable victim. This is him as General Zartok from the Green Lantern the animated series. If you were truly a soldier, you would know that blind loyalty is far better than honor or bravery. And this is him as Thunderbolt Ross and Red Hulk. Thunderbolt Ross. I made a whole career out of beating on greed monsters for the good old U.S. Army. Finally, I decided to fight fire with fire and Hulkatize myself. Now I keep an eye on Hulk, you know, to make sure he doesn't mess things up. Justice League Unlimited, he plays Lex Luthor. The truth is, for all my struggles to make my mark in life, for all I've accomplished, in just a few short generations, my name will be forgotten. Even the greatest of us can't compete with time and death. Resistance from the simpering mammal. So he's got a lot of these. I'm not going to play all of them, but that was a lot. So I was able to show you guys quite a bit of his voice. Um, and I think that he has a really nice like tone to his voice. It's deep. It's kind of grovelly, um, a little bit different. I, I do appreciate um, this type of voice as well. It's a little closer to normal than some of the other voices we've heard. But this is his speaking voice. So that's actually what he sounds like when he's talking. And so um, I think that's really cool that he has that natural tone. So even even people like Ian McDermott, their natural voice isn't that crazy it's not that low it's a voice they create which is also impressive but i do think that clancy brown um being able to do vocal roles because of the natural voice that he he actually already has his speaking voice that's really cool i like that and i like how it sounds and i think that it could work as galactus not my favorite but it's a good one so let me know down below if you like clancy brown for this role and then uh next up we have 
Peter Cullen. I couldn't keep Optimus Prime off of this list. He had to be here. So you guys already know Peter Cullen. Um, Peter Cullen is um, 77 years old. Um, he is a voice actor who is uh, well-versed, but prominently, most dominantly known for one voice and one voice very specifically, and that's Eeyore. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's actually, um, tra it's obviously Optimus Prime from the Transformers. So, um, Optimus Prime, leader of the Autobots, roll out. I can't nearly do it as well as he can. Duh. But here we go. I'm going to show you guys some of the roles that he's known for. Optimus, 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 Eeyore from, uh, uh, what's it called? Winnie the Pooh. Optimus, Scientist, Optimus, Trooper, Car, Eeyore, uh, Zanzor from like a knockoff of uh, Transformers, Klar, uh, Eeyore, 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 Bludgeon, Abominable Snowman, Optimus, Optimus, Eeyore, Mantis, uh, something, Kangaroo, something, Hagar, uh, blah, 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 Eeyore, blah, 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 Optimus, blah, 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 80s, 80s, Transformers, Transformers, 80s, 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 all of it's in the 80s, 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 all of it. I'm like, I'm scrolling for days. This is 80s. He was in Spider-Man and His Amazing Friend, again in the 80s, where he played Hulk, Bruce Banner, Red Skull, Crusher Hogan, and Mysterio. Um, that's very interesting. I like that he played the Hulk. Uh, would, I would like to bring him back, not only to the, to space and to Cybertron, but actually just to uh, Marvel Universe space and to the Marvel Cosmic End where he could uh, be the devourer of worlds. All right, so let me go ahead and play for you the voice you are already familiar with. I won't play too much of this because you already know him, but this is Peter Cullen doing Optimus Prime. Before time began, there was the Q. I'm Optimus Prime. Do you want me to say Autobots? Yeah. Autobots Recon. Yeah, it's getting like a little bit quieter. I have witnessed their capacity for courage. Dude. And though we are worlds apart, like us, there's more to them than meets the eye. That's super cool. I love, I love Peter Cullen's voice. And I know you do as well. Optimus Prime is one of the most legendary voices we've ever received. Uh, it blessing our ears. Um, and I think that it would be highly fitting for him to play another uh, super powerful, super iconic intergalactic space um, leader. Kind of, Galactus isn't really a leader. He's like, he's just, he's there. He's kind of like an nearly all powerful cosmic being that is uh, basically his sole intent is just to stay alive. And so I think it would be really cool. I'm really excited by this. Ian McDermott, I think that Kevin Michael Richardson, I think that Jeremy Irons, Liam Neeson, Corey Burton, I think that Steve Blum, Clancy Brown, and Peter Cullen are all great options um, for the voice of Galactus. Now, I know there's a lot of other uh, voice actors out there, and I want you guys to let me know who you think should play the voice of Galactus. And if you think that they should also be able to play him physically on screen, that would be really cool. Out of the actors that I chose, I think the only ones that are really going to look good in the mask, uh, if I'm being totally honest, are Ian McDermott and um, and Jeremy Irons. I think Jeremy Irons could look really good as Galactus, like his actual face. And I think that Ian McDermott would look absolutely perfect as um, as Galactus. So if you were to put the helmet on him, that would work entirely. So that is all that I have to say. I am super grateful to have been able to do this giant run with you guys. I know this was a much longer video than usual, but it's because I wanted to play for you guys that audio, the audio clips of these guys, because it's not really visual casting for Galactus. For Galactus, it's probably going to be motion capture CGI. You'll probably even have a body double for those guys. Someone that's going to actually wear the, the suit and put on the nodes and track his motion and all that. And then you'll probably have one of these guys voice Galactus. So that's what I was getting at here. Anyway, if you guys like this fan casting video, make sure to give it a like. Click the thumbs up button. And also make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on notifications so you can be alerted right away when I go live next time. And also, thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are the best. You guys stay tuned for more. 
right here on The Stuff of Legend. Hey guys, D-Lo here. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And remember to share this video with all of your nerd friends. I know you got them, and you know who they are. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about this discussion. Let me know what you would like to see me do a video on next. Subscribe to the channel because you're a legend, and we have that in common. Also be sure to turn on notifications to be notified right away when I upload my next video, or so that you can be alerted when I go live next time. That way you'll never miss a thing. Check out the other videos on the channel so that we can have a discussion on all your favorite movies and TV topics. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legend.